adaptado a romance novel, Save the Galaxy, by Ariana Derrante. Chapter 33, Buku 4. Jan had to call deeper on the force than he would like to maintain his calm expression as they disembarked from the Mandalore ship on Mandalore. They had landed the ship in the corner of what Jan could only call a fortress, though we had already heard it referred to as the clan compound of House Moril. From above, it had looked like several clan compounds had been surrounded by a giant wall. Mandalorians were gathered in droves, most of them not even pretending to be doing anything other than watching the ship, and no doubt the Jedi on it arrived. They certainly were not some. Thankfully, implying he was in a relationship with the Mandalore, I mean, the rest of them back off of y'all, at least. Unfortunately, the last day on the ship had been surprisingly brutal. First, there had been the emotional conversation with Kamadi, where he had discovered that she had the totally unrealistic dream that they'd be partnered together forever, even after her knighthood. He had explained that all new knights were sent out on solo missions, and they may, in fact, never work together again. He'd honestly been a bit baffled why she would want to. It was obvious she was going to be a very different Jedi than him once she was off on her own. He held affection for Kamadi, but they had very little in common. Her interests were astrophysics and hollow novels. She openly groaned when he started in on his research into ancient Force sex and history. Kamadi wasn't even like Qui-Gon, who at least had sometimes enjoyed hearing of alternative Force sex and, for some reason, forced prophecies, in addition to his botanical interests. Jan was pretty sure that the only thing he and Kamari both enjoyed doing was lightsaber practice. With that awful conversation out of the way, Jan had resolved to get some of the knights they were traveling with to give Kamari a better idea of what to expect in her own knighthood. He then turned his attention to considering what to suggest to the council regarding his own mission. He had accompanied the true Mandalorians to Mandalore in order to smooth over any problems from the fact that the governor of Galadron had partnered with Death Watch to try to use the Jedi to kill the true Mandalorians. The council had agreed it was a good idea. Not to mention, if they had had to go to Bandamir to rescue Initiate Kenobi, it would have been good to have another Jedi other than Qui-Gon there. However, there was now the question of if their mission was over, or if the Jedi should be offering their help with Death Watch. Plus, Jan also felt it was his duty to watch over Initiate Kenobi, No Master Faye might be doing that already. He had been deep in contemplation of the issues when the second disaster of the day arrived with Jester coming to tell him about his confrontation with Kabadi. His offer of TR and someone to talk to about it had been appreciated, but Jan had felt desperate to meditate on the second surprise his better one and thrown at him that day. Crushes my Padawans on their masters were not common, especially in their early teens. Jan was feeling like a failure for not noticing Kamari's at all, especially since she was 18 and this had to have been going on for a while. Plus, he was baffled since he had explicitly told her on at least one mission to a very sexually liberated planet that he wasn't sexually attracted to beings. He hadn't told her that he did enjoy the physical aspects of sex. He, Sevadius, and Jocasta had all experimented with each other when they were younger, because that wasn't an appropriate thing to tell your Padawan, but she should have known she had absolutely no chance, even if he wasn't her master. Not to mention that the idea of any master becoming sexually engaged with their Padawan, their student, who they were completely in charge of, made him feel ill. He didn't know where he had gone wrong, and he didn't know where he had gone wrong with Qui-Gon. It had been years since he talked to his first Padawan rail as well. Was he just a failure as a master? Was his strictness on decorum and propriety wrong? He honestly thought a lot of his training was less strict than Master Yoda had been with him. But maybe he wasn't. Had his, his, had his own disagreements with the Council regarding their reliance on the Senate and other issues turned all his Padawans into rebels and misfits. The Force had offered no answers. Initiate Kenobi was waiting near the edge of the landing field, though he was hard to pick out considering he was wearing Mandalorian clothing. His own had probably been lost during his captivity on Bandamir. In the Force, the boy was loud, not projecting his emotions per se, but reaching out instinctively to Jan and the Jedi around him. Yang kept his emotions firmly behind a mental wall, but he gave the polite equivalent of a tap on the shoulder back. 
This seemed to startle the initiate, and he withdrew behind some rudimentary but impressive shields. Faye must have been teaching him. Jaster was talking to a Twilik, who was giving him a sight report, but broke off when a handsome black-haired man, who must be Hold Van La, approached with initiate Kenobi at his side. Megor, may I introduce Obi-Wan Kenobi of Clan La? said Gla with a proud grin on his face. Obi-Gun, this is the Mandalore Jester Mareel and his ad Jango Fett. Obi-Wan's head bobbed forward for a moment as if he was going to bow, but then he aborted the movement in favor of thumping his fist across his chest in the Mandalorian salute. Mandalore? Yeah, I could hear one of the Mandalorians behind him say, Aww! and hoped Kenobi couldn't hear. Then the boy turned to him and bowed the proper Jedi bow. Master? Young Dooku initiates Kenobi. I would like a report on the events on Bandamir later this evening, if you are free. Jan would convey his compliments for keeping up with Qui-Gon. Then, Obi-Wan looked to his father, who nodded. We can do that, said La. I'm surprised you don't have him in armor already, said Jan to La, trying to keep his throne alive. That was no doubt the council's worst nightmare. There was a spike of anxiety from Obi-Wan, but La pat him on the shoulder in reassurance. He's a weak elf of twenty thirteen. I figured we may as well get his Virgotin out of the way, then start on the armor. Jan had no idea what a Virgotin was, but he'd ask Jaster later. He did know from gossip on the ship that Mandalorian children started off slowly wearing pieces of armor in order to get used to the weight and feel over time. Plus, that way they didn't have to resize it so much as the children grew. You need help getting some Beskar, asked Jaster. La shook his head. Already taking care of Alor, he said. Obi-Wan shot him a look of surprise, which La ignored. Where is Master Faye? asked Jan. He could tell the presence wasn't anywhere nearby. Gaza better spending the night with a farmer and her wife, said the Twilik. From there she headed out into the wastelands. Master Faye will be back soon, I think said Obi-Wan. She, if she'd been teaching him some mental arts, they most likely had some sort of bond. The initiate didn't have a Padawan braid, so Jan assumed Faye hadn't claimed him. Well, let's get everyone settled then, said Jaster, raising his voice to signify it was an order. The Jedi, trailed by La and Obi-Wan, were led to some living quarters to one side of the compound. Jaster assured them they were as far from the true Mandalorian's main barracks as they could possibly get here. Nigerian, who had been definitely bank hopping the entire trip, looked disappointed while the Miriala Knight Legro looked relieved. I'll show you the way to my quarters later, said Jaster with a wink. Django groaned sadly in the background. Hold well, on, you and Obi Wan staying here as well. La nodded. Like a bull. Yan had been assuming they'd go elsewhere, but it wasn't a bad idea to keep them close. La would need to get used to being around Jedi if he was determined to have a role in his son's life. There was also always the possibility that one of the knights here was looking for a Padawan. Speak of which, he looked around to find Komari, where she had been looking miserable and lingering at the back of their group. Komari, would you guide the initiates in bare-handed Makashi for the next hour? Afterwards, you can both go for lunch. Yes, master, she said. It wasn't a punishment, though she probably thought it was. Jaster had insisted the only punishment he wanted her to have for threatening him was to get some help. Jan thought she needed something more than that, but honestly wanted the advice of someone who wasn't him to decide on what punishment should be. I will be making some calls, he announced before retreating to his assigned room. He was in desperate need of advice, but left with the same problem he had had before. Yoda would be no help especially since Jocasta had confirmed via a short comm message that Yoda was indeed at the heart of Initiate Kenobi's early send-off from the temple. He wasn't looking forward to telling the men the war that. He truly only had two close friends at the temple. Saif Adias was a good listener and would be happy to chat about Jedha if Jan wanted destruction, but had never had a Padawan himself. Jocasta, meanwhile, had had several Padawans, plus the multiple archivists and Explore Corps members she mentored, but Jan wasn't sure if he was up to her blunt honesty at the moment. He could talk with Jaster, except he really needed a Jedi's perspective at the moment. There was only one thing for it. He called the temple and asked to be directed to the mind healers. A moment later, Master Trasa appeared. Her root-like tresses were bound back in a loose bundle today. 
if she was surprised to see him. She didn't show it. Master Duke, how can we help you today? My Padawan is in need of a mind dealer. I was hoping we could set up a meeting for her via con until we make it back to the temple. And as yet, Kenobi also needs to touch base since he spent some time in slavery on Bondamir. Thrasal's eyes narrowed. I'll need a report on the mission to give to Obi-Wan's mind healer. I have only the Mandalorian account available right now, but I will be debriefing him this evening. You will be gentle with him and avoid making him relive any trauma. Trasa ordered. Jan nodded, though he had absolutely no idea how to do that. He wasn't good with younglings, let alone traumatized ones. Maybe that was another reason he had failed his better ones. I... He said, and paused. His pride and years of self-reliance warred with what he knew to be true. He needed help. Well, never let it be said. He avoided doing what needed to be done. He drew himself up. Most of Thrasa, I'm also in need of a mind healer. I would appreciate your guidance on how to deal with my Padawan and the initiate. A flicker of surprise went across Thrasa's face before she smiled warmly at him. I have some free time now, Master Dooku. Let's talk. 